Menier's disease is named after a French doctor, Prosper Menier, who found that this condition originated in the inner ear, not the brain. Menier's disease is also known as primary idiopathic endolymphatic hydrops. It is a disorder of the inner ear where fluid is accumulated in the labyrinth or the semicircular canal. Menier's disease has four main symptoms with one special characteristic. They are periodic. Sometimes they are there, disturbing your day and social life. Sometimes they are not, giving you false hope that the disease is gone until it returns later. These symptoms are vertigo. You have a spinning sensation that starts and stops spontaneously. Two or more episodes of vertigo occur without warning and usually last between 20 minutes to 12 hours. Go watch our video on vertigo as it is closely related to Meniere's disease. Hearing loss. Early on, you lose the ability to hear low to medium frequency sound or a mixture of low and high frequency when a vertigo occurs, but eventually it may become permanent. Tinnitus. It is the perception of hearing something like buzzing, roaring, hissing or whistling, when there is actually nothing. Oral fullness, it is when the sufferer feels pressure or fullness in the affected ear. Cause. Scientists are still unsure about the cause of Meniere's disease, but currently they think that it involves both internal factors such as immune system disorder and poor fluid drainage, and for external factors such as infection and allergy. Diagnosis. To confirm Meniere's disease condition, the most important thing is your symptoms and medical history. Tell your doctor as detailed as possible. Some of the many tests that can be helped are Electronystagmography. The test can be used to check the inner ear function based on your eye movement. Pure tone and speech audiometry. This is to confirm the hearing loss and rule out the nerve as the cause of your symptoms. Electrocochleography. This test put electrodes in your ear to measure the bioelectrical activity of the cochlea. Multifrequency tympanometry. It detects the resonance frequency of the tympanic membrane. It is non-invasive and can be done quickly. Related conditions. The symptoms and tests can help to separate Meniere's disease from other similar conditions. Some diseases that may have similar symptoms or even have a connection with Meniere's disease are labyrinthitis. It is the disturbance of the labyrinth caused by inflammation without fluid buildup. Sinusitis. It has fluid buildup as a key characteristic, but it happens in the eustachian tube. Otitis media. When it occurs at a younger age, it can lead to Meniere's disease during adulthood. Lyme disease. Vectored by a tick, an infection caused by Borrelia burgdorferi bacteria may follow and manifest into hearing loss. Temporomandibular joint disorder. The treatment for this can also alleviate the symptoms of Meniere's disease. Management. There is no curative medication for Meniere's disease yet, but nausea, vomiting, and spinning sensation can be controlled by some medication. For example, antihistamine. Surgery can also be an option, especially if the disease is in a later stage. For example, endolymphatic sac procedure. The surgery is done to remove part of the mastoid bone to help access the sac and remove the fluid. Labyrinthectomy. This is when parts of the inner ears are removed, erasing the need for the balance and hearing functions. Vestibular nerve section. Parts of the nerve or the inner ear are surgically cut to correct vertigo. If further help is needed, seek communities or organizations that support hearing loss issues. Rest assured, the disease you are currently suffering from can be managed as long as you strive to get better.